Sales of vinyl records, compact discs, and cassette tapes all increased in the first half of 2023, so many people would like to be able to play all three formats. That has traditionally required a large rack of audio components with a maze of wires connecting them. Luckily, there was one very unique audio component which combines all three functions into a single cabinet about the same size as a standard turntable. The Anders Nicholson Model 2655. Anders Nicholson is a brand named after the famous Norwegian interior designer Anders Anger Nicholson. Actually, that's a lie. Even though they made the logo look like a signature, if you look up the trademark for Anders Nicholson, it says the brand does not identify a particular living individual. Instead, it's a brand name that was made up by the discount mail order catalog company Heartland America. They sold this model from 2010 to 2015 at various prices ranging from $199 to $249, and their description of it had the same scare tactics that Legacy Box is using today. The sound quality of your records and cassettes is degrading by the day. Capture them before it's too late with this Anders Nicholson USB turntable cassette player CD burner. So, is it actually any good, or is it just something that was thrown together to sell to gullible senior citizens? Let's find out. It is a turntable, cassette player, and CD recorder, which is the opposite of most stereo systems from the 90s and 2000s, which had a cassette recorder and CD player. But the main purpose of this was to convert your old tapes into digital form, rather than record new ones. But perhaps more useful today than the CD recorder is the USB output, which you can connect to your computer and use to convert any of the sources this can play directly into digital files. Or you can connect an external audio source, such as even an 8-track player, to the aux input. It does not have a built-in amplifier or speakers, but it does have a line-level output, which you can connect to a pair of powered speakers, such as these Bose Companion 2 speakers. Underneath the turntable dust cover is also a headphone jack and also the main power switch. And when you turn it on, you can tell it's from the early 2010s because of the exceedingly bright blue backlit display. According to the sticker on the bottom, it was distributed by Electro Brand Incorporated. If that name sounds familiar, that's because in the 70s and 80s, they were an importer of cheap radios, boomboxes, and stereo systems. But the company is now defunct, and their trademark was cancelled in March 2023. And this appears to be a production date of either January 20th, 2013, or just January 2013. And the large rubber feet aren't just decorative, they're actually adjustable, which is useful for leveling the turntable. Originally included with it is the owner's manual, which has not been archived anywhere, so I scanned it in, and I'll provide a link in the description to download it, even though over half of it is just telling you how to use Audacity. You also get a quick start guide, an even quicker quick start guide that's just a flow chart, a copy of Audacity on CD, and a notice telling you you can download newer versions of it from the website. And attached to the turntable was this Operation Steps Guide, which I'll also scan in and include a link to download. Also included with it was an audio cable, a USB cable, a stylus protector, a 45 RPM adapter, which actually says 45 RPM adapter on it, and the remote control. Most of the functions can be accessed through the buttons on the front panel, but some cannot, including, strangely, the volume control for the headphone jack. The turntable is, of course, the highlight of the system, and I'm happy to say it's not as bad as you might think, and it even has some interesting and unique features. First of all, despite what the description on the website said and what the red stylus may lead you to believe, this is not a ceramic cartridge. It is a magnetic cartridge. It is a Chuodenchi MG09D, otherwise known as the Groove Tool cartridge. And for better audio quality when playing LPs, you can upgrade it with an elliptical stylus, the 901DE. And if you don't like the way it sounds, you can upgrade it because it's on a standard half-inch mount head shell with slots for adjusting the alignment. 
and it's on a metal tone arm with an adjustable counterweight. It's not calibrated in grams, but you can see some marks on the tone arm here. And if you adjust the counterweight to that larger mark in the middle, it'll track at the recommended weight for the cartridge it comes with. Which is supposed to be two and a half grams, and on my scale, it measures almost exactly two and a half grams. The turntable plays at 33 and a third, 45, and 78 RPM. And although it does not come with one, you can get a proper 3 mil stylus for playing 78s. Just look for the part number 901-D3. And speaking of speed, this may vaguely resemble a strobe pattern on the edge of the platter, but it's not. It's just a decoration. Although these knockout plugs suggest that there may have been a fancier model of this turntable, which did have an actual strobe and pitch control. You get a cueing lever to help you place the tone arm on the record, and it gently lowers it. But you also get a pause button, which stops the turntable. That's a feature you don't normally find on a turntable. And when you're ready to begin playing again, you just push the button again, and it starts playing again. Unfortunately, even though the remote control has an identical looking play and pause button, that does not work for the turntable. It's only for the CD player, so if you want to pause the turntable, you'll need to get up and push the button on the turntable itself. But if you want to finish playing the record before it gets to the end of the side, just push this button here which looks like an eject button. And it picks up the tone arm and returns it to the rest and shuts off the turntable. It will also do that automatically when it gets to the end of the record. You notice that little red light there? That indicates something special about this auto return mechanism. That's because unlike the vast majority of turntables, the auto return mechanism is not driven by the main turntable motor. It has its own separate motor. I can demonstrate that by removing the platter and then pretending like I'm going to play a record. That's just the motor running with nothing attached to it. And I'll hit the eject button and you'll see it returns the tone arm to the rest even without a platter spinning. It is a belt drive turntable, but unfortunately the platter is just plastic. And you may have noticed how noisy the turntable motor was before. Well, here it is after adding just one drop of oil. It's almost totally silent, even on 78 RPM. At first I thought it doesn't have any auto return at 78 RPM, but actually it does. It just takes longer to engage. Which is a good thing because 78s vary widely in how close the grooves go to the middle of the record. So it's just giving extra time to make sure the record is actually done playing before it auto returns. Now I'll give you some direct hookup samples of the turntable playing various records.
If you're thinking the fact that the cassette player is tucked away on the side is a sign that it's an afterthought, you'd be right. This is a very low-end, bare-bones cassette player mechanism. You just stick in your tape with the side you want to play facing up and open end facing the rear. And it begins to play. And the only control you get is fast forward. You push the button until it locks and now it's fast forwarding. And you push it again to release it and it goes back to playing. And if you want to eject the tape, you push it in all the way and your tape pops out. Just like on the turntable, I think this knockout plug indicates that they at least thought about selling a fancier model with a more full-featured cassette player. But on this version, this is all we get. And the display goes almost completely to waste when you're playing a tape because the only thing it says is tape. You don't get a tape counter, you don't get a level meter, except when you record the CD then you do get a level meter. So why couldn't they show that all the time when playing a tape? Or for that matter, when you're playing a record? And to me, the big letdown with this cassette player is the high amount of background hiss it has. And you may think, well, that's a Type 1 cassette with no Dolby noise reduction. Of course it's going to be hissy. But on this player, most of that hiss is from the electronics, not from the tape. You can tell because when I press fast forward, the hiss stays the same as when it's actually playing the tape. I'll demonstrate that by giving you a direct hookup of this tape, whose clear leader should be almost completely silent. I'll play it on this cassette player, and then I'll play it on a higher quality cassette deck at the same recording level, and you'll hear how much less hiss it has. Nonetheless, if you're playing tapes whose recording level is high enough to overcome that amount of background hiss, it actually doesn't sound too bad. I'll give you some direct hookup samples of it. If your speakers are correctly balanced, then you should hear the piano on your left hand side, the double bass on your right hand side, and the drums exactly midway between your two speakers. is important in ensuring good body alignment. For playing CDs, it works just like any normal CD player. You put in your disc. It doesn't support anything fancy like CD text or MP3 playback. But for regular audio CDs, it works perfectly fine. And you do get the luxury of being able to control it with the remote control. But the unique thing about this system is that it's not just a CD player. It's also a CD recorder. It can record on either CD-R or CD-RW discs. That's what most of these buttons are for. 
Once you put in a recordable disc, you can press the rec button to enter recording pause mode. And then you can press the up and down recording level buttons to set the recording level. You can use this level meter as a guide to help you set the recording level. You just don't want it to illuminate the over indication, which means you're over modulating and distorting. Anything below that is fine. And it can either split the tracks automatically or you can split them manually with this button. The auto track mode will automatically split the tracks whenever it detects more than two seconds of silence. And it will also automatically pause the recording when it detects continued silence, such as at the end of an album. This is the end of the orientation. We hope you've enjoyed getting acquainted with your new premium quality audio system. And then when you're done recording, you just press the stop button and then you can finalize the disc so that it can be read in any standard CD player or ripped on any computer with a CD drive. Now I'll do a brief direct comparison between an original CD played on my Discman and a copy of it made on the CD recorder and you'll hear that it sounds exactly the same. <laughs> So the CD recorder works beautifully when recording from the cassette tape player or the aux input, but its fatal flaw is when you're recording from the turntable, because as soon as you begin recording, the drive spins up to maximum speed, which causes vibration, and because there's no physical isolation between the CD recorder and the turntable, it gets picked up by the stylus as a rumble. I was told at one point that uh, that I wouldn't be able to get a diamond stylus. So that uh, I I went glibly and with great trust into that Dutch uh, idea of the CD. <laughs> Opening this thing has proven more difficult than I anticipated. I removed all the screws from the bottom, but when I go to separate the two halves, that's as far as I get. There seem to be plastic clips holding it on at the front. I'm sure with the right tools and technique I would be able to pop that off, but I don't want to risk breaking it. But for now, I can at least prop it open like a car hood to give you a peek inside. And there's quite a bit more going on in here than I expected. As you can see, there's circuitry on both the top and bottom. It does have a surprisingly large power transformer, and next to it several voltage regulators mounted on a heat sink, which throws out an immense amount of heat. Those three trimmers on the circuit board are most likely for adjusting the three speeds of the turntable, but they're blocked by the cassette player, which is why, unlike most turntables, you do not get access to them from outside the cabinet. There's the turntable motor which runs the platter, and just as I suspected, there's a separate motor which runs the auto return mechanism. So that's a very unusual feature to have a separate motor dedicated to the auto return rather than driving it off the platter motor. It has a typical car radio style cassette player mechanism with a production date of January 18th, 2013 which was after Tanishin stopped making cassette mechanisms. So this was a knockoff of their design. If I stick in a cassette, you can see it starts to play. It does have a metal flywheel, and there's the stereo tape head and the capstan and pinch roller. And if I engage fast forward, all that does is release the pinch roller and fast forwards the tape. 
and there's the auto stop it does not eject the tape it just stops the motor and you'll have to eject it manually there on the cassette player motor you can just about make out a label saying it was made by Mabuchi and it runs on 12 volts DC and there's the speed adjustment trimmer on top of the cassette player motor but with this lid in the way I'm not going to be able to get any access to adjust that and your eyes are not deceiving you this is an ordinary five and a quarter inch SATA computer CD drive maybe even a DVD drive with the connectors just hot glued into place and even though this is almost guaranteed to be a DVD burner drive because I don't think they ever made any SATA CD burner drives if you try to put in a DVD data disc it tries to read it but then it just says disc error so on the Anders Nicholson model 2655 the turntable is surprisingly good the cassette player is passable and the CD recorder works perfectly as long as you're not recording from the turntable and in fact I think I could hear it causing some distortion when recording from the cassette as well because that's also sensitive to vibration just not nearly as much as the turntable and that's a shame because this is so close to being great for someone who wants to enjoy all three of the most popular physical music formats nonetheless if you do still want one of these they're surprisingly plentiful on eBay often in nearly unused condition probably from all the people who tried using it once to record a vinyl record to CD and then gave up on it <laughs> 